Hey everybody, welcome to our species spotlight on the turban snail or the trochus species of, uh, of snail. Now, the origins of this uh, cool little invertebrate are basically it's widespread across the uh, entire Indo-Pacific, ranges from the Indian Ocean to Northern Australia, and uh, juveniles are typically found more in shallower intertidal type uh, zone areas of a reef, whereas the adults are more often, the larger species, more specimens are more often found on the steeper slopes of a reef uh, in, in general. Now, a little bit about their behave, si behavior, size, color, comportment, and so forth, tank setup. Uh, these, are, these are peaceful little invertebrates. Uh, they are truly a reef safe species. Um, one word of caution that's worth noting is that the, you know you want to make sure your uh, any newly introduced corals are well cemented in place while the uh, trochus is a smaller species of snail when they max out uh, you don't really buy them at a half inch to an inch but when they max out at around two inches uh, they're, they got a strong foot they as they cruise along they can knock over newly cemented pieces so make sure that they're securely positioned so that doesn't happen um, they're typically kind of a light gray uh, shell color with some reddish brown bands on them. Very, very attractive small snail. Over time, you might have some coralline algae growing on their, on their shells, totally normal. Uh, they have a black foot to them as well. It's another way you can identify the species versus some other like turbo snails that have a whitish beige kind of foot. These have a black one. Um, Typical reef setup is, is perfect for this uh, type of uh, invert, obviously a lot of nooks and crannies, and they actually prefer to be introduced into a uh, well-established reef, obviously for feeding purposes. Um, you know, you would stock them at a rate of about one per gallon or so. Uh, in newer setups, uh, one per every couple of gallons should be fine every two to three gallons to ensure there's enough food and to make sure that they are getting enough food at night, a little bit of nori seaweed at the bottom of your tank or an algae tablet when the lights go out. This will typically ensure that they're well fed. Uh, they're actually long lived. Uh, they live a number of years, anywhere from eight to 12, some documentation of even longer than that. Uh, they do take a couple of years to mature and the cool part is they actually breed in your aquarium. So they're self-sustaining. And uh, in fact, there are plenty of, uh, you know, commercially raised uh, trochus uh, snails available for sale these days. Uh, one thing to note as well is that they are they are relatively sensitive to changes in water chemistry, so you want to make sure you drip them as well, just as you would a new introduction of fish or a coral into your tank. Take time and acclimate them to the new water chemistry. Um, water conditions, a little bit about water conditions, uh, nitrate levels as, as you would typically maintain a reef less than 10 ppm as best you can. Uh, good solid tank maintenance, getting rid of detritus, keeping your filters and skimmers clean and so forth, and regular water changes. Calcium, that's something, obviously calcium magnesium important for the shells. You want to maintain a calcium level of four, at least 400 to 450 ppm and magnesium between 1250 and 1350. Typically what it should be at anyways if you're doing, uh, you know, regular water changes with a good marine salt. Um, but test to make sure the levels are stable. Temperature range 74 to 78 degrees Fahrenheit. Uh, pH range 8.1 to 8.4. DKH degrees of carbon and hardness around 8 to 12. And specific gravity, of course, 1.022 to 1.025. Like other invertebrates, they are sensitive to, um, you know, some types of metal ions like copper. So be careful, no copper with them, obviously. Uh, feeding, it's a herbivore that consumes a variety of different algae, including algae and biofilms that grow on both the glass and the rock work. Um, they will uh, graze on some nuisance algae like hair algae or brush algae, but you wanna make sure that, uh, uh, they, that that's not the only solution is keeping these snails. Uh, they won't uh, eliminate that type of algae. Uh, they prefer obviously a rock environment. That's typically where you're going to find uh, the trochus species. It's not something that it wants to venture out over the uh, over a sandy bottom all that much, uh, but they will if they if they have to to get to the glass. Um, and as I mentioned, don't forget to feed them at night. It's an important thing as well. A tablet or two or some nori seaweed on the bottom and the lights go out is an important thing. So there you go, trochus snail. Great addition to any reef aquarium, something that we feel any thriving little reef should have or any reef tank should have. And of course, being self-sustainable is a big advantage and a big plus for them. So there you go. Hope you enjoyed the species spotlight and see you next time. Thanks for watching.